It's more interesting than you may think. Here we go. I'm from Gothenburg, and I'm from... Uh, thank you, thank you. And I'm from one of the suburbs to the south, uh, which is also the home to many of the bands that I'm guessing that you like, who were my friends, my teenage friends, whom I partied with and went to their rehearsal spaces to listen to their music. And um, right before this uh, section is, um, we've been talking about Nick Anderson from Entombed, that he was one of the first trailblazers. He was like the main trailblazer in Stockholm. And so now we're coming into a section that's about Gothenburg. Okay. Tompa Lindberg from the suburb of Bildal, south of Gothenburg, was one of Nick Andersson's tape trading buddies in the 80s. When Lindbergh came across the Brazilian band Sarcophagos demo Black Vomit, released in 1986, it was leaps and bounds cooler than anything he'd ever heard before. The music was so driven, simple and primitive, it was like Bathory, but bordering on grindcore. They wore spikes absolutely everywhere and posed on Brazilian graveyards with enormous monuments in the background. It looked so raw. We felt we had to follow their lead. Grotesque formed in 1988 with Sarcophago as the blueprint. Tompa and guitarist Christian Volin stole crucifixes from the gift shop of a church near their high school, hanging them upside down around their necks. An intense phase of amateur craftsmanship commenced in the backyard of Tompa's parents' house. Used car mats and nails were combined into spiked bracelets and pentagram adorned breastplates. Tompa has vague memories of his father helping him construct the inverted crosses that Grotesque would later use as stage decor. Christian Volin was in an arts program in school and an aspiring graffiti artist. He designed the Grotesque logo, drawing inspiration from both metal aesthetics and street culture. Later that year, a Grotesque gig at a junior high school dance in the southern suburbs of Gothenburg was shut down by representatives from the local parents' association. Nevertheless, the show made a deep impression on a few of the kids in the audience. Mikkel Stanne, now the vocalist of Dark Tranquility, clearly remembers the evening. When the adults stopped the show, Tompa started screaming about how the devil would come after them. Then he scratched his face until he started bleeding. It was the coolest gig I'd ever been to. <laughs> Anders Fridén, the future vocalist of In Flames, was also in the audience. He recalls the stark contrast between the audience and the band on stage. The upscale suburban kids stood there in their brand new designer jeans. Then this skinny, bearded guy with corpse paint burns a Bible on stage. People totally freaked out. I was at that dance. 